Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Yep, back doing another pandemic project. This one was previewed earlier. This is a Shakespeare long cast. It's the 100. It's a rear drag fishing reel, a little bit dirty. Never been serviced according to the owner. And uh, we're going to see if we can't uh, tune this one up, show you how to do it if you own one of these, and uh, show you how it's made if you're just interested in the, the basic manufacturer of the reel. So the long cast idea is the narrow spool tapered that gives you more room to let line off easier and the easy cast function is a matter of the reels bail with a little trip lever or trigger lever on it uh, coming back so that as you cast with your forefinger you can trip the bail never touching the line to let it go and we have a little bit of a bail issue here in terms of the triggering back uh, we'll go work on that as well oh, there you go maybe it was just the weirdness that I was doing that with. All right, so let's uh, let's get started. Let's take it apart. And uh, as we do most of the time as I get started, I'd like to thank our first responders and frontline personnel for all they're doing to keep us safe during the pandemic. And uh, that goes well beyond just the doctors and the nurses and the uh, essential uh, medical personnel, the EMTs and the like. It goes into law enforcement. It goes to the firemen, the teachers, everybody's trying to help keep us normal uh, in these uncertain times. So thank you for all it is that you do. It's much appreciated. Okay, so let's take a couple other notes while we're at it. I have a glove on my hand to protect me from the chemicals and stuff that may be in there. And I also use a parts tray. In this case, it's just the bottom of a fast food container. And... Uh, I put all my pieces and parts in there so that I know where to find them when it's time to reinstall the reel. All right, let's uh, let's remove the external pieces. This one uh, should have a handle that just twists off in a clockwise direction, which it does. I'll take that off. I'm hearing a little squeaking going on there, so I'm just going to throw a little bit of penetrating oil onto the joints of that handle. It's probably been a uh, some time. As a matter of fact, the the owner of the reel said it's never been serviced. I can. Kind of guess that but that's okay and we'll just let that kind of do its magic work its way in and now you see why i wear that glove i don't want uh, a lot of that stuff on me if i can avoid it all right next up then let's take the drag cap off the bottom here sometimes these cases come off with uh, uh without removing this cap sometimes they don't so uh in this case i'm just going to take it off we'll back this off get it out of the way It just pulls off simply and then if we uh, if we have a chance we'll go and take a look at the drag stack which is held in with the clip but uh, let's continue then taking that off there's three Phillips head screws here well those are those crazy machine screws and sometimes a flat blade works better than a, uh, a Phillips head so let's go ahead and do that So these are very popular freshwater reels. This one's a size 30, which means it's going to be able to handle 8 and 10 pound fish. And the uh, these don't go much higher than that because the drag systems are limited by the small surface area of a drag. Uh, so if you're going to put a drag into here, obviously it's a lot smaller than the top drag system. And the uh, the, the, the surface area defines max drag on, on drag washers, so the, um, if you don't have that much, then you can't really pull uh, big fish with it. There are a couple of saltwater uh, reels that are rear drag, but not many, so it's preferred for, uh, for freshwater fishing. The beauty of it is, is that they don't take a beating like the top drags, because uh, the uh, reel uh, is sealed on top, but on the top drag, that's the one that gets all the water when you're winding the, the reel. It all accumulates around that drag adjuster knob, and uh, that becomes problematic. Okay, so we have a plastic case, and uh, we are absolutely certain that this reel hasn't been serviced before. This one's dry as a bone. So uh, let's go ahead and take the axle shaft out. I'm guessing this may have a uh, single ball bearing in it, but I'm not sure. The axle shaft is held in by a little clip here, so I'm removing the screw. It's a little Phillips head screw. 
can see it on the end of my uh, uh, my screwdriver and that probably tells me that it's a uh, steel screw because my screwdriver has a magnetic tip that would hold that. Once you do that, you can pull that little clip out. Notice the orientation when you pull this out. It's a good time to tell you take pictures along the way if you're wondering how these things come together. Uh, that way you can go back and, and take a look. This one came from underneath with the hook and there's a deep channel here that rides over the crosswind block. So just uh, notice those things from an orientation perspective. Once you do that, then you can remove the axle shaft. That enables you to remove the main gear. And we have a, we have a pretty nice setup here. We have uh, three ball bearing reels. So that's not a bad, uh, bad design. Most of the time you see these reels, you see a single ball bearing up top and bushings. This one has the, uh, the three. That's pretty impressive for a design of a reel. So uh, if you can get three on a rear drive reel, you're in pretty good shape. We got four. Wow. Okay, I'm impressed. So we have a ball bearing sitting behind our crosswind gear as well. So very good. All right, I don't know if I can get that one off easily. I'm going to give it one quick try. If not, we're going to oil in place. Yeah, we got it off. Okay. I'm going to spray that one because it looks like it's got some dissolved grease on it. I'm going to spray that one with the penetrating oil. Doesn't look like we need much cleanup because all the grease is in that have evaporated. But there is a little bit of grease on the back of this main gear, so let's go ahead and get that off. I'm using a cotton swab for that. Notice on this main gear that there is a wire that runs off of here. It's an eccentric spring. Comes out and over. I'm not sure if it's very visible, but uh, trust me on that one. There is a wire there, and you do want to pay attention to that because that's how you're going to reinstall your anti-reverse. Put that main gear in there. I'm going to check the teeth on the crosswind gear. That works. Let's set these two off to the side for a moment. This is the crosswind block. This one's easy to get messed up as well, so take your pictures. I remember that the screw goes in on the left hand side of this, but easy enough just to flip it over and, uh, and make that mistake when you go to reinstall. So that's where pictures help. And then we'll come up top and we're going to remove the tie down. is a little uh, collar bracket and then we can remove the, the rotor nut. So this is one of a bunch of reels that David sent in and David uh, told me they haven't been serviced so it's pretty apparent but that's okay at least it's uh, getting serviced now. There's two screws that hold our pinion gear and top bearing in place. They're also steel because I can't get them off my magnetic tip there, so that's okay. And I'm leaving these right on my table here because I'm just going to pull it in. I'm going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to check the teeth on the pinion gear. Again, it's dead dry. We're going to use fishing reel grease. In this case I'm using pen precision reel grease and we're going to general, generously apply especially if we expect that uh, the next time this thing is serviced it will be bone dry again so let's make sure we get a nice coating in there. I'll take that ball bearing now. Now there was a um, little collar below in case you didn't notice that the ball bearing. I'm going to put that on there. I like to oil ball bearings so I'm going to use a uh, fishing reel oil, it's Real X. I've also used uh, the Pen Precision Reel Oil. Doesn't matter whose brand of oil to me uh, that you're using, but what it does matter is that you are using fishing reel oil. So please don't uh, don't settle for anything else. All right, and then we have that little um, shim washer that goes up top. The case is clean. You don't need to do anything there. I just noticed it does the little slightest amount of some older grease there. So let's go ahead and, and get some of these parts off the table now so we don't bounce them around. We reinstall the pinion gear. The collar has two sides to it. One has got that little uh, indent to it where the flathead screws are going to go. 
and even though it's magnetic, it's not uh, positioned properly there. So line that up with your holes and put these in. So Shakespeare makes a nice, a nice wheel, especially on the uh, the value end. That's kind of where uh, Pure Fishing has uh, positioned the Shakespeare's as entry level reels, but uh, they have a long history that goes all the way back to the early 1900s and uh, the reels that they make are are very nice they're not knockoff reels they, uh, they serve their purpose they're done well they're, I'll call them the value line and in this case I'm quite surprised that they have four four ball bearings in there that's quite a quite a treat all right here's ball bearing number one is going to go back in here which is going to hide under the crosswind gear and then ball bearing number two goes in that case there that came off of the, the main gear. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to oil that bearing. We're going to slip that back into the case. And put a little bit more oil on that, just because it hasn't had a uh, oiling in a while. Now we can put a little bit of grease into the inside of the case because the ball bearing is probably going to grip it there. I checked all of the teeth on this, so I'm going to put some grease onto the teeth. I'm also going to put it into the front of this because that's where your crosswind block is going to ride. So that goes in next. Then we've cleaned up our main gear. So now we're going to do the same thing. We check the teeth, made sure that they're all there, that there's no chips or cracks or, or bends in them. And then this is probably the one critical part of the, uh, the assembly. You want to get that uh, wire that's kind of hanging out here and there's a slot the slot is in this little anti-reverse mechanism here right there and this wire on the main gear has got to go into that slot now sometimes these main gears have windows in it where you can see through sometimes they don't and when they don't like this one you just want to look over the top and you want to make sure that it's set in properly Sometimes it's harder to see than others. There we go. And then just check it. If you have an anti-reverse when you're doing this, then you know you've got it right. Okay, when you've got that both in, then turn this so that your crosswind block winds up down below. That's the stud on it there. That's important in terms of uh, setting this up. The crosswind gear. Clean the back of your crosswind block. There's a little uh, slot in there. Make sure that the grease gets out of there and then go put new grease into it. And you can set that onto the stud like that. And you can grab your main gear. Oops, I put the rotor back on. Take your rotor. Now my experience with these um, easy casts is that there's two ways to put this on. You want to make sure when you put this on that this arm always returns here. So you want to put it on, give it a test, and then see. In this case, you'll notice that it went to the other side. You have a 50% chance of hitting it. And I didn't get my 50% right. I'm going to take that. I'm going to turn it around 180 degrees. I'm going to reinstall. Now I have it where it's going to return to there. So don't get frustrated. I don't think you did something wrong. It's just a matter of you can do one or the other. And I'm sure that somebody who works in the 
Shakespeare plant who put these together has a little tip for us in terms of uh, there's a, probably a marker on here or something that they tell you to go uh, look for. I don't know what that is, so I'm just going to say if you have it facing the wrong way, just simply take a deep breath or take it off and put it back. But that was the time to test it right there before you start putting the rotor tie down screws or any of that other stuff in place. Okay, here's your screw that belongs here next. That's the tie down on that ring that's holding the nut from moving. Now we can put our little axle shaft in. I'm going to just kind of clean that off with a paper towel. If there was anything serious about that, you can go use steel wool and the like. Light coating of grease. Don't go crazy with that because it uh, will only wear off. All right, I might have to align your cross wind block to accept that shaft. And then you need to turn your axle shaft so that it, it uh, properly aligns with the the, uh, the drag washers below. Okay, once you get that seated in there then, now you need to align the two slots with the cross wind block, one up top and one below. This is difficult to see on camera, I'm sure, but there's uh, one of the slots is right here, the other slot is on this side, and there's not a lot of tolerance there, so you really got to be pretty much right on the. Then we can grab the uh, tie down for the cross wind block, which came in from underneath. Do the same, slip it underneath, kind of get it locked on, and then fold it down. And grab that little screw that's the tie down screw for that. Thank goodness these things are steel because me and little screws have enough issues without trying to deal with a small screw like this on an internal piece like that. All right. And we know we can put that case back on without the, uh, the drag adjuster, so let's just go do that right now. And I'm not sure if we put the oil on that bearing on the main gear, so let's go ahead and do that at this point as well. If we put it on, well, no harm, no foul. It'll just be a little bit extra oil in the case, and that won't be a very big deal there. Okay, so once you complete that, let's go ahead and put the case on. Nice solid little click there tells us that that's in place properly. Take our three case screws then. And we'll go down, just open up that drag stack for you, show you how that's done. I'm going to use the Phillips head until. Uh, I find some resistance in there. Like I said, it can be used either way, flat bladed or Phillips head. Spin, make sure it's oh look at that nice spinning 
action. All right, so let's go ahead and show you how to take this off in case you have a bad drag washer. This is a spring clip that's held in place uh, in a groove. Keep your finger on the outside of this. You don't want to shoot this spring clip. And I just use a screwdriver to kind of start working it out. You'll see when you can get a little pick or something behind there. Just be careful. I had to go order a couple of cases, body, lower bodies, because people have pried it out and broken the clip off. There we go. So that's what you want to do. Get the one side out. You want to hold it with your fingers so you don't shoot it. And you can walk it around to get the other side out. I'm going to put that on my table. Then this whole assembly should pull out. Except that I got all kinds of grease on me at the moment. This is, I'm, I'm saying pull out. This, you need to unscrew this. There you go. And this is your drag stack below. So we have the ring, we have the screw in, you put the adjuster cap, we have a solid metal washer, the spring, and then this is the rest of your assembly. We have a drag washer up top, we have the click mechanism. We have a forked washer, another drag washer, another forked washer, repeat. Okay? Um, these are Teflon washers. You don't need to do anything with them. So we're just going to do nothing. What you do need to do is to reset the click mechanism in place. And then from the top, you have the Teflon washer on there. From the top, you have this forked washer. They go into the grooves in the case. And I like to use this little pick because it just seems to have a universal function to it. We have another drag washer here. That would go next. And I apologize if it's hard seeing inside the channel here. Actually, I actually have two of these picks. I'm going to get the pressure right. Push them down. There we go. Then we have a round washer. That comes next. It's got a key in it. So that key has got to wrap around the the post. There's two flat sides to that post that we're working on. Just like that. I don't know what can be seen or can't be seen. Last of the drag washers. So we got we got some pretty good max drag in here. These washers are bigger and um, they are uh, there's more of them. The last one is again it's an eared washer and that rides in the channels, these grooves our spring. Then we had the, the metal shim washers and they go inside this cap here. So let's put them in there. It's going to be easier to do it that way. And we can grab our cap and screw that in. Just like this. And our metal ring washer run in and now look for the groove here because that groove it's got two holes and it's got a side plate you want to do the reverse of what we did set it into one side find that little window where it opens what we have to do here is make sure that you're above that ring and you got to put this in
looks like we have a little bit more that's got to go with this. So I'm just going to grab this and tighten that down more. Use that cap to do that. Now we should be better off in terms of having the clearance to set that ring. I guess when I hand tightened it, I didn't put it down enough. That's okay. And you can see we got the one side in. Now hold that spring again because just like the other time, it can shoot. Then line it up and there you go. You have that done. Press your cap on. Grab your tie down screw. And that's it. That is your Shakespeare 100s without the handle. We'll put the handle on, give it a test drive in a moment. But that's how you do it. Pull back on, put the handle in, recently greased handle. I'll grab a little paper towel here to make sure that I take some of that grease off, but that was squeaking before, if you recall. Look at that. Four ball bearings, a nice drag system. Yeah, those drags are working fine. Back them off. Okay, just wipe the handle off from that grease, give it a spin, a whole lot smoother and a whole lot easier than it was. So that's your, uh, your Shakespeare 100, it's the long cast with the uh, easy cast function, and uh, there you go. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that, if you did please like the video, if you have questions please leave it in the comment section, it doesn't have to be about this reel, if you have any kind of real question please go ahead and do that. Uh, and again, uh, if you'd like to see all of these, please subscribe and hit notifications. That way you won't miss any of the videos that I post. And I post all kinds of uh, reels, bait casters, and uh, rear drag, and front drag, and salt water, and fresh water. If, there, if there's a reel out there, uh, doesn't matter what kind of variety, I generally uh, will post those videos. So thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for more. Have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.